All right. Uh, moving forward, uh, the Twitter sphere is a buzzin'. It is a buzzin'. Why is it buzzin'? Uh, over healthcare and over what Jimmy Dore has proposed uh, to do to get Medicare for All up for a vote in the House of Representatives. And I particularly think that this is a fantastic idea. I support it. I've been tweeting about it. Uh, So if you follow me on Twitter, you've probably seen uh, a bunch of tweets from me in response to a variety of progressive Democrats that are in the House of Representatives, um, you know, basically pushing what Jimmy's been pushing. Uh, And here's the deal. So uh, there, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Dore, uh, you know, I I like Jimmy. I've gotten an opportunity to meet Jimmy once when Lee Camp was on a a panel in Baltimore. I got to go down there and then I got to go hang out with Lee and Steph and uh, uh, Jimmy and Nick Barana and Tim Black and everybody. And it was uh, it was a really fun time. Um, Super courteous, incredibly nice guy. Uh, I, I got to talk to him for a brief moment. Incredibly sweet dude. But, uh, you know, uh, Jimmy um, has this idea. He points out in a video that there are 15 progressives right now uh, in the House of Representatives. A couple of them just got elected, right? You got AOC, you got Ro Khanna, uh, Pramila Jayapal, Ayanna Presley, Cori Bush, Jamal Bowman, um, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib. I know I'm missing a bunch. Uh, but, you know, effectively the people that believe and ran on Medicare for all, right? That, that we need universal health care, that everybody deserves health care, not deserves the access to or the choice of or the right to, but just deserves health care, period. Nothing else to it. And they won. They won their seat. They got your vote from various different states, various different districts that they represent across the country. And, uh, and, they're, and they're all about to, you know, nominate a uh, Speaker of the House, and they're going to choose Nancy Pelosi again. Uh, you guys know Nancy Pelosi, Sweet Nance, Ice Cream Nance, uh, M- Magnum Nance. That's a very specific reference. <laughs> Talenti Nance. Uh, what else is a rich ice cream? <laughs> Those are the only two I know. Magnums and Talentis. Those were those were treats for me. My mom will every so often get get the Magnum ice cream bars, uh, but they're expensive, and you only get four of them in a box, and they're like eighteen eighteen dollars. I don't know. But um, she's she's up again, you know. And and these progressives who who recognize that Nancy Pelosi is uh, as responsible for the American people not getting health care and not getting UBI during a fucking pandemic, as responsible for that as Mitch McConnell, as Donald Trump is, they're still going to vote for her. The flagship issue that you guys ran on, Medicare for all, universal health care, health care as a human right, this woman objectively opposes. Back in June, when everybody was advocating for a universal basic income, and Permala Jayapal was the only person out of the Progressive Caucus that had the fucking balls to go up to Nancy Pelosi and say, why won't you look at it? And Nancy Pelosi's response was basically, we'll never look at it. Stop bringing it up. We don't want to look at it. And Permala Jayapal buckled. Because there was nobody supporting her. There was nobody supporting this progressive. Nobody in the progressive caucus supported this fucking progressive issue. Now, you you don't have to be all in for universal basic income. But it's still more progressive than what we have now. <coughs> And there was only one fucking Democrat going going against, you know, the party bosses. And the party bosses being Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. And she got no support. So what's Jimmy's idea? This person 
that has denied people health care, that has denied people progressive, um, progressive platforms that we need, is once again uh, up for uh, speakership of the House. And she needs to, you know, so there's, uh, what's the number here? 222 Democrats, 209 Republicans, so she would win the, the House majority. What Jimmy Dore is saying is these 15 progressives would essentially all they have to do is say they're not going to vote for Nancy Pelosi until she brings up Medicare for all to a vote in the House of Representatives. And then we have on record who votes for it and who doesn't. And then we also have on record that if it does pass, if let's say 80 fucking percent of the House of Representatives decides that yes, Passing universal health care, Medicare for all, is something that we need in this country right now. And that we should look at Pramila Jayapal's bill and, and, and vote on it and implement it. And then they don't do anything about it. Then we know, once again, that these people are just liars. And there's no need to have progressives within the Democratic Party. And that these progressives don't really care about anything but their careers. Regardless of what happens, it goes on record. Now, there's a lot of people coming after Jimmy Dore about this. I'm I'm not going to go into that. It's the usual suspects, and 100,000 people have done a video about who's going after Jimmy for what and the hypocrisies within uh, all of those people. That, that's, that's not particularly what I'm interested in. Um, but there are a lot of people uh, who, who didn't like Jimmy Dore that are, you know, that are supporting him at this point, which I think is also very interesting. There's a couple reasons why you know, people like Nancy Pelosi, who is a hundred millionaire that ma- made all her money through, you know, uh, through, through the economic downturn of 2008, uh, she's one of the richest members of Congress. Why someone like that would not want a Medicare for all. Uh, first and foremost, there's an unemployment crisis going on right now. We're about to reach a depression uh, a lot of people are losing their jobs because of the pandemic. And uh, with that said, they're also losing their health care. Because health care is tied to your employment, which is an insane thing to do, uh, and because of at-will employment, because of uh, right-to-work states, uh, because of the anti-union laws, this this particularly makes the working class in America uh, a lot less powerful. Because if you go on strike, you lose your health care. And if your kid gets sick, if your family gets sick, then what are you going to do? Uh, so it's extortion. People lose their employment, they lose their health care. They go on strike, they lose their health care. It's extortion. Medicare for all, if it was a universal health care, and so regardless of what happens, you are still covered by uh, some kind of health care, that you can still go to the doctor. That means more people can strike without the worry of, you know, if they get sick, what am I going to do? It's, it's a concern that's relieved. Uh, and what do we really need in this country right now? A general strike. Not voting on Medicare for all. And even bringing it up for a vote. I mean, AOC pointed that out on Jimmy's show. Jimmy Dore's show, when she came on, is it won't even come up for a vote. It won't even come up for a vote. Well, Jimmy's idea now is to bring it up to a vote. And you have the power to do that. 
72% of the country. A Fox News poll, a Fox News poll showed that 72% of the country wants universal health care, wants Medicare for all. The platform of Bernie Sanders, the platform that these people ran on and won their seats. They want it. People want it. This is just a logical idea. Fifteen Democrats hold the power right now. And, and you know, Ron, Jim, Ron Placone and, and, and Jimmy Dore both pointed out, why is it 15? Well, it's 222 Democrats to 209 Republicans. If you take 15 away, then, you know, the Republicans would, would then get the majority, right? So then, so then everybody goes, oh, but do you want the speakership of the House to be Republican? Well, it's not about that. It's about getting on record who is for and is not for universal health care, something that almost three-quarters of the fucking country wants. We, we, they have the power to do this. They're just not implementing it. Last week, I talked about how 400 lawmakers globally globally wrote a fucking letter instead of just drafting up a global law. You could have made that law. You could have said that Jeff Bezos in every country were coordinating a, to basically make sure that you don't become the world's first trillionaire while your employees suffer. You're going to become a trillionaire, but you can't pay your employees a decent wage. You can't give your employees a, 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 a decent paid lunch break, health care, paid vacation, maternity leave, but you're on your way to become a fucking trillionaire. 400 lawmakers could have fucking done that. And they didn't. They wrote him a fucking letter. A toothless action. A video that got throttled, by the way. YouTube shouldn't show that video to fucking anybody. Uh, And once again, the progressives in Congress have an option to put this up as a Sophie's Choice to Nancy Pelosi. Do you want your speakership to continue? If you do, bring it up for a vote and we'll see where things go. If you don't, then you don't get our votes and then you don't become the Speaker of the House. And that makes things a lot harder for fucking Joe Biden. Not really. Joe Biden's a Republican. He'll do fine with the Republican, you know, uh, Speaker of the House. It's a good plan. More people need to jump on board. More people need to come on board and, and, and uh, you know, tweet at their congressman, call them. Not even call just your congressman, because you, your, your congressman might not be one of these progressives. Just call these progressives. Tell them, you're, tell them you're, you're from so-and-so state, and what they do in the House of Representatives is going to directly affect them, especially when it means that they're not going to get a vote on health care. That affects everybody. So it doesn't matter whether Ro Khanna is your representative or not. It doesn't matter whether Permila Jaipal or Ayanna Presley or Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is your fucking representative or not. Just call them. Just tweet at them. Do something. Put the public pressure on them. This is what we're supposed to do to elected officials. They are public servants and they're not serving us. Henceforth, we have to fucking hold their feet to the fire. This is what the fucking Democrats said the entire time during the election. Well, don't call out the Dems. Don't call out that we need to beat Trump. Well, Trump is now defeated officially as of yesterday. He got defeated. We have a Democrat that's going to be the president in January. Time to hold their fucking feet to the fire. And if, you're, if they're not willing to, then there is absolutely no point in having progressives within the Democratic Party. And the progressives need to leave the Democratic Party and either join the Green Party or join the movement for a People's Party. We have people like Nina Turner that have to run underneath the Democratic Party ticket because she doesn't have any other fucking choice right now. 
Because in order to be recognized in the state of Ohio, she can't run as a Green or a Libertarian. Because they have to, they don't have, they don't have enough ballot access because the duopoly fucking holds them back. This is the system in play. So for all the people that are sitting there going, oh, well, well, if Nancy Pelosi doesn't win, then the Republicans going to win. Yeah, well, then maybe there shouldn't be two parties at play here. Maybe there should be more parties at play. You see all the shit that this is, this is exposing? And even if they don't, even if they don't, that shows you who, whose side they're on. These progressives, if they don't fucking hold Nancy Pelosi's feet to the fire, then, they, then, then they've already shown you whose side they're on. They're not on the side of the people. They're on the side of, of the party bosses and the donors. They're on the side of the oligarchs. It shows you that America is not a representative democracy. It is through and through a fucking oligarchy. Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to, to, to address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, and that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.